I'm the director here of the AF Witsit Center. The AF Witsit Center is one of the many programs through the Kent County Health Department. I have been in this role for the last uh, two and a half years, going on three years. So the Witsit Center, um, which most commonly is referred to, um, is an inpatient substance use treatment facility. We offer various different levels of service. So we have 12 crisis stabilization beds. We have withdrawal management. Mm -hmm. We have high intensity and clinically managed residential treatment services. They offer one to four day stays for individuals who are suffering from opiate or stimulant use disorders. So individuals might call up and they're looking to get into a treatment right away. It doesn't matter what their insurance is, as long as they're a Maryland resident, we work very hard to get them in as soon as possible, try to do same day. Then we can help them identify what they want to do as far as ongoing treatment. But it is a way to get someone in and kind of stabilize them from the crisis that they're experiencing and hopefully prevent a potential overdose. We do offer walk-ins. We offer walk-in hours available Monday through Friday from 8 to 11.30 in the morning and Tuesday and Thursday evenings from 5.30 to 9. A lot of individuals, that is how they access our services, is through the walk-in, um, but then probably um, the rest, probably about 25% call and get an appointment, a scheduled appointment. We get referrals from outside providers, especially peer-run programs who are trying to link somebody that they're working with in the community to a treatment bed. Yes. So everybody gets an assessment. We look at the person holistically. So we're looking at not only their substance use um, history and issues that they're dealing with, we're also looking at what's going on with them medically and what's going on with their mental health. So when we look at someone and then we try to figure out what are the avenues of additional treatment that they can participate in. Some individuals want to withdraw off of all substances that they're on, so we offer withdrawal management, um, which is anywhere from a seven to 10 day stay. The good thing about how we've designed the program since I've come on board is individuals can just come in here for withdrawal management. Um, we were kind of, when COVID happened, everything shut down to only one unit. It used to be a two-unit program. COVID happened, it went one, one unit. We reopened the second unit, and we just refocused that on crisis stabilization and withdrawal management, trying to meet people where they are. Some individuals, they're very new to working on recovery, and they're not able to commit to a long-term type of a stay. They're not sure what to expect. Um, they don't aren't sure that they need additional services, but they want to come in and do withdrawal management. So we're trying to meet them where they are um, and make them see that there's lots of options. The hope is that people will move beyond whether they're in a crisis bed or whether they're in a withdrawal management bed to residential treatment. We all know that the longer some individuals can stay in treatment, the higher their success rate is. It takes 30 days to change a behavior. If you can keep them in treatment and have them start that recovery journey while they're here and then have all the aftercare and linkages set up for when they're discharged, the higher their success rate is. So that is what our hope is. So if they can um, transition over to our residential treatment unit, then they're looking at, you know, at least a 28 day stay. It could be extended if they're waiting for like a bed in a recovery residence and it's not quite available. We can ask for additional authorizations. Yes, um, one of the things that we have implemented is a focus discharge coordinator to focus on that aftercare planning. That is what we were seeing with individuals who were coming back in for treatment, is that those connections, which they say the, the opposite of addiction is connections. So having those connections is what really helps an individual with maintaining and um, continuing on their recovery journey out in the community. A lot of individuals are referred to peer-run programs. So for instance, if it's a Kent County resident, we have our Recovery in Motion program, which is staffed by peers, and we try to make those connections before they leave treatment so that they've already established and met somebody and 
that person then helps them with their journey with in the community and helps helps them make sure they understand where they're supposed to go because there's a lot of times a lot of appointments and a lot of different things that they have to take care of and that person can help them with that so we've established partnerships with the peer programs in all the various um, counties Cecil County, like Voices of Hope, the peer um, run program that comes out of the health department. That's another one that we work you know, closely with those two. Um, we serve anybody from across the state of Maryland. The majority of clients that we serve do come from Cecil County down through the lower shore counties. That's our biggest catchment area. Um, but we, we serve individuals from every county across the, the bridge too. I think one of the biggest concerns, and I'm not even sure that it's COVID related specifically, I just think the change in the environment of availability of drugs. In particular, xylazine, which is a horse tranquilizer, not for human use. We are finding that that is uh, making its way into the local drug supply and that has devastating effects on individuals. Fentanyl, um, I would say probably two years ago, we saw that increase of heroin use. A lot of it now is it's primarily fentanyl. So whoever's putting the supply out there, they are adding different things to the drugs and it doesn't matter what it is. Um, it, you know, whether it's, you know, the heroin or marijuana, it, these other drugs are making their way and being mixed with it, and it's just causing some very devastating effects. And I think it is making it more difficult for individuals to really focus on their recovery because the drugs are impacting them at such a more challenging level for them to you know, work on sobriety. Well, right now, our, what we're focused on is the $4 million that the Moore administration did appropriate for us for, to this building for some infrastructure needs. Um, this building is over 40 years old now, and it does have the original um, HVAC system. And so, we're very excited that that is moving in the direction and we can you know hopefully get some real key pieces of the infrastructure um, renovated so that it means that we can continue to provide services here the expansion opportunities we are always looking as to what else can we do for the community what can we do for the region what can we do for the state so right now we don't have anything concrete. Um, we are looking at what the needs are within those jurisdictions to figure out how best to utilize the existing space that we aren't utilizing at this moment.